my name is Richie and welcome back to another video today I'm doing something a little bit different uh, I'm doing sort of a comparison video because uh, I did a live stream on uh, the brand new class 158 yesterday and a lot of people asked me what's better the Scott Rail class 158 or the Scott Rail class 380 and I thought you know what I'm going to compare the two for you so yeah, these two Loco DLCs have just come out within the last couple of weeks. Uh, a lot of people are unsure what to get, um, you know, what offers more, um, which is better overall, you know, which one should you get? Uh, so today I'll compare the two, I'll show you like the timetables and what they offer each, uh, each of them, and then I'll do like a little run so you can hear the sounds and whatever else. Obviously a big difference is one's diesel, one's electric. Uh, and then at the end I'll give you my sort of opinion on both of them and then help you decide which one you want to get. Um, personally, I'd say get both of them because they're both pretty much just as good as each other. That's just straight off the bat though. So what I'll do is I'll jump into the timetables for each and then I'll do a little bit of a run on their respective route. So obviously the 380 for Cathcart Circle and the 158 for Edinburgh Glasgow. And I'll show you what both are all about. So yeah, let's jump on into it. Right, so let's start with the Class 380. As you can see, the Class 380 gets two variants with it, which uh, one's a free car and one's a four car. Uh, you can see that it only layers into Cathcart Circle at the minute. Um, you know, who knows? In future routes, we could see a lot more, um, a lot more sort of services on other routes and stuff, and well, other just general Scottish routes that this could layer into. But for now, it only layers into Cathcart, and you've got a ton of services. I think, well. For Kafkar, it brings a whole new timetable. Um, obviously, if you go on to Kafkar Circle, which we'll do quickly now, uh, you can see that you get two separate timetables, the one of which you only get with the 380. And like I say, in that timetable, you have tons of services, and you obviously get a whole new timetable, which boasts all this stock here. Um, and maybe, I think some there's some like Engineering Express moves as well. So if you've got the applicable DLC, you can get a lot of layers, and it really builds up Kafkar Circle really nicely. As for the Class 158, as you can see, this is playable on two routes. Uh, you've got a couple of depot moves on the Cathcart Circle, and you've got a whole new timetable on Edinburgh Glasgow, which adds a lot more um, sort of like layered stock, uh, AI stock mainly. It takes away a few layers that are playable, like some of the rail tours for some reason, but um, you do have like a lot more AI i.e. like 170s, you've got some HSTs, 801s, that sort of stuff, which we didn't have on uh, Edinburgh Glasgow before. You can see it does a lot of four-line runs and a lot of Edinburgh to Dunblane services, um, which I don't think they're fully, you know, accurate. Uh, a lot of people said that, you know, they wouldn't realistically run between Edinburgh and Glasgow or Queen Street, and it would be very rare to see a 158 at Falkirk High. But, nonetheless, for actual gameplay, you get quite a lot. You get a lot of services and you get two time timetables as well. Uh, and obviously this one has a lot more services in it. Also with the 158, you get some scenarios on five circle. Obviously it's not in the timetable just yet, uh, which is a shame. Obviously we thought it was going to come to the timetable. And I think that's what a lot of people are unsure about with the 158. But you do get, in the meantime, a couple of scenarios which are quite fun. I've done them both. Uh, I haven't done that one yet. But yeah, they're quite cool scenarios which you can run on five circle. But we will, hopefully be getting the 158 included in the timetable when the leaving branch comes out which should do quite a lot of services so at the minute there's not as much as there should be but the potential to have a lot more services you know is on the horizon so let's do these in release order i'm jumping into the 380 first and just doing a couple of stations along the kafkat circle i'll probably only go to like burnside or something like that only about five ten minutes um but yeah there's a lot of features with this obviously you've got the whole slanted uh, gangway which is operational you've got the 33 ch 33 percent chance of a worn out aws um obviously the sounds are quite good it sounds very similar to what they do in real life key thing is that it's an electric uh, train it's an emu so it's obviously going to perform differently to the 158 um, but it looks good it sounds nice and also this is uh, made by dovetail uh, the 158 is made by skyhook so so yeah right there's a lot of doors i'll let you have a little listen to the uh, door locking sounds sounds quite good right let's go let's get over to kirkhill um so yeah i mean the 380 is quite a nice unit it sounds good it looks good as well. It looks absolutely stunning. Uh, the livery looks nice as well. This is a good thing as well. The livery on the both of them will look pretty much identical. Uh, and I love, I love the Scott Rail livery, as I've said before. But, you know, if you get this, obviously, you get a whole new timetable with it. It's a whole different experience. They're both kind of similar in the sense that they're sort of like this little cab window sort of feel. Um, but, obviously, the 380 is um, it's a nice unit. I quite like it. 
I feel like it doesn't add that much, if I'm on it. Well, compared to the both of them, I don't think the 380 adds that much, as in gameplay across multiple routes. For the one route, it adds a lot. It adds an all, you know, a ton of um, services to Kafka Circle. But as for Edinburgh Glasgow and Five Circle, um, you know, it doesn't really add much. Here you go, look, this is the front of the train, the exterior whilst it's moving. It, it's nice, it looks really nice to be honest. I think it's very well made. Quite a bit of weathering as well, um, which I think is lacking a little bit on some of these ScotRail stock, i.e. the 385. Uh, it doesn't look too great. Uh, let's slow down a little bit. Obviously, it's a single-handled EMU. Um, it's kind of what you've got to expect really with um, with EMUs nowadays, isn't it? So obviously the 158 has different controls. Um, and you know, th there's different sort of features to that as well. So let's slowly come into Kirkhill now. But yeah, I mean, I picked up the 380 and I absolutely loved it. Obviously, you've got uh, functioning GSMR down there. Uh, yeah, I, I absolutely loved it, and I think it's a brilliant addition to, uh, to Kafka Circle. Right, let's slow down for Kirkhill. As you can tell, it's the zero sounds. Um, sounds very similar to the 700 and like the 350 and stuff, uh, which I think is pretty much prototypical. Um, some people said it sounds exactly like a 700 and in real, in real life it wouldn't sound that similar to a 700. However, to the untrained ear, it looks, it looks and sounds as it should. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's a 380. It looks very, very nice. We'll lock the doors and get over to uh, the next stop of Burnside and then I'll jump into the 158. Right, let's go. Full throttle, full power. Go, go, go. Lovely stuff. Yeah, it's nice. So obviously, uh, it's a free car unit. You do have free car and six car formations uh, along across the timetable. Obviously, in uh, what you might call it, uh, free roam, you can put together as many as you want. Uh, but yeah, so you, you're not subject to just one formation. You do have coupled up formations. And you can also, in the timetable, I have seen that you can actually couple up to another 380 in Glasgow Central as part of the actual timetable mode, which I think is quite neat. Um, it's very similar to the 377 on uh, London Brighton, where you can pull up behind a train and then you can couple up to it and then carry on your merry way. Uh, so I, I quite like that idea. I think that's quite cool. Another key feature, and it's kind of more of a timetable feature, obviously with the 380, as I was just alluding to, you can do end-to-end -end runs, and you can sort of like stay in the 380 for a long time, as in you can do a lot of Kafka Circle runs uh, that are contained with the 380. You can't quite do that with the 158, because obviously you can do to and from Edinburgh Glasgow and Ed Edinburgh and Glasgow, uh, but you obviously, if you do some of the Dunblane services, they sort of end at Polmont and you can't jump back into them. So that's a bit of a bit of a fall, a bit of a downfall. But hopefully, once once uh, the Five Circle update comes out, then we will possibly see end to end runs to like leave and stuff. Cool. Here we go. Right, coming into Burnside now. Full full brakes. The brakes are good on this unit. I will admit, they're very nice brakes. So. But I'm guessing electric trains do have good brakes. Right, there you go. So that is the Class 380, a little bit of a run on that. So you can kind of get an idea of what it's about and what it sounds like and how it operates. So yeah, that's the 380. Now let's jump into the Class 158, which I'll do a little run on Edinburgh Glasgow. And here we go. This is the ScotRail Class 158 on the Edinburgh Glasgow route. Here we are at Queen Street. Uh, so as I showed you in the main menu, you get a new timetable for this, which includes playable 158 and 385 services. Unfortunately, it's taken away from some of the um, some of the actual layers that are like steam rail tours and stuff. I'm not too sure why it's took them away, uh, but I think it's been addressed and being sorted. Um, but you know, the timetable adds quite a few things. This is this would be a uh, Edinburgh, Edinburgh Waverley run, uh, which I don't think they do in real life, but it's not that much of an issue. It adds some gameplay, to me anyway. Um, let's sort of doors. A key feature with this compared to the 380 is obviously we've got a guard mode, like a sort of virtual guard on here somewhere. So you can see that all the doors have shut bar one, um, and there you go, that shuts, and then you get a guard buzzer. So a completely different operation. Um, so it's not really a fair comparison between the two, but obviously it operates like a diesel. I'll let you have a listen to it. I'm going to run this as far as crew, crew, Croy. Um, it'd be cool to have crew in the game, modern day. But yeah, we'll, we'll run this to crew. As you can see, it looks very nice. Very nice indeed. Yeah, nice. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's a four car formation. And uh, in the timetable, you have two and four car formations too to play around with, which are quite cool. 
Right, here you go. Here's the class 158 from the outside as we emerge from the tunnel there. It looks very nice. It sounds very good as well. Uh, a lot of people, what they're not sure about is obviously with the 158, there is already a 158 on Midland Mainline. What I'm, pre what I'm pretending here is that there is no Midland Mainline. Right, let's imagine that it never came. Right, it doesn't exist. Um, and it's, this is just based on, you know, if they were two separate loco DLCs uh, and, you know, 158 didn't exist. I think the 158, it sounds good, it looks good, it obviously helps that it kind of already exists in the game, but we're pretending it doesn't exist today. Uh, but if you don't have Midland Mainline and it didn't exist, then I think it's worthy of being a loco DLC, if I'm honest. Um, it means that you don't have to buy a route in order to get this. Um, obviously, you need to have Edinburgh, Edinburgh Glasgow to make the most of it, uh, but I'm be I believe it's detached, so if you want to do the five circle scenarios, you can. Um, obviously, a lot of people want this for Five Circle, and I understand that. So if you want to get it for Five Circle, I'd hold off until the update comes out for the for the Leaven branch. Um, but if you want to just give a 158 a go, uh, and also you want to add a lot of AI to Kafka Circle, which it does, it adds an awful, an awful lot of AI. Um, you know, comparing the, the timetable and the AI at uh, Central, uh, Glasgow Central, uh, before the 158 came out and afterwards, you can blatantly see that there's a big difference. What I've not spotted there is that there another 158 there on the branch line. Not a branch line, but up here, which is quite cool. You didn't really have anything on that uh, on that portion of the line in the old timetable, so it's cool there's some stuff there as well. Uh, you do get some 170s dotted about and some GWR HSTs, which are fitted in for the Intercity 7s. Uh, and you've also got some 801s at Waverley too. So yeah, it's nice. It's a nice unit. It's very nice inside. You've obviously got the whole guard function where they buzz you, uh, which is quite cool. The, uh, there you go, buzz buzz. Uh, and obviously, the, um, in the scenarios, it is a lot of making sure that you buzz the, the, the guard back and whatever else. So the, the scenarios are quite cool, actually. I think they're based off real services. So they're quite cool. Uh, and it does add you know, a bit more gameplay to this route, which I think needed it, to be honest. But it looks nice, and it sounds pretty much spot on to me. Um, I believe this is the Cummins engine, which is what he used in ScotRail uh, in Scotland. Um, so I don't know whether that's true or how accurate that is, but from the, like I say, from the untrained ear and the untrained eye, it looks good. It sounds good. It, it's a 158 at the end of the day. Um, what I quite like on the 158 is this whole like snow plow thing. Let me uh, get a bit closer to it. I quite like the whole snow plow looking thing down here. Um, very nice indeed. And also the numbering is really quite nice on here. Uh, the interior is good on these as well. I probably should have compared the interior of the two, but uh, the interior on this is quite nice. I love the maquette. Um, I love the Scott Rail maquette in general. But it's cool. It adds quite a few. If, if anything, it actually adds more gameplay, um, which, uh, you know, if you look at the three routes, it adds gameplay to all three of them. Uh, the 380 is just for one route, um, which is, it's one of them sorts of things where, you know, if you want, if you're thinking of if you're if you're looking at the price of it and thinking well what can i what can i how much time can i spend on each one in the actual timetable and in scenarios and i think it's quite close because you have a lot of scenarios and a uh, lot of scenarios and timetabled services for the 380 uh, but you obviously get more you get more varied 158 runs obviously on three different routes so yeah i mean Looking at it from that point of view, the 158 sort of trumps the 380, but um, I think one thing to look at is that if we ever got a potential, uh, another Scottish route, right, I think the likelihood is that I think the 158 would actually layer into more routes than the 380. I don't know how correct that is, um, but if you're looking at it from a potential scope, I think the 158 can pretty much layer in everywhere, whereas the 380 can only really layer in to, I think, in and around Glasgow. So when you get up into the highlands and the really scenic parts of Scotland, you can only then see the 158. Um, obviously you'd see other stock, but yeah, I think if you're looking at it from a potential sort of deal, you know, what potential DLC we could see, I think the 158 will eventually layer onto a lot more routes. Uh, similar to like the DBBR 101, which layers onto pretty much every route uh, and things like 66s and stuff. So from that point of view, the 158 is better. Obviously, one thing to point out with the 158 is that it's a newer loco, as in the sense that it only came out last week. Um, so there is still a few little bugs around. There's a GSMR bug and a headlight bug. Obviously, they'll get iron out. There was a couple of bugs with the 380 when it first came out, so it's kind of a bit unfair there. Um, but things like bugs and stuff, I don't really want to focus on because overall, they, they function well. 
and they, they seem good. So yeah, that's my sort of stance on that. Yeah, so I, I quite like the 158. I think it's a, it's a cool it's a cool unit to have in general. Um, you know, let's now go back to like pretending that Midland Mainline exists. Well, pretending it does exist. Uh, you know, the 158 compared to the Midland Mainline one is just so much different. You know, the whole cab difference, the interior is different. They sound pretty much the same, but I think that is prototypical because there's only two versions on, I think. I think there's a Cummins and a Perkins engine, and I think it is the Cummins engine that runs on Scott Rail. You know, looking at the two existing 158s, you kind of, you know, do have, um, you do have similarities, but you do have a lot of differences too. Whereas with the 380, I know it's a standalone DLC, it's a brand new train. Uh, but again, like sort of sounds wise, it's similar to the Zeros, and we've got a lot of De Zeros in the game already. So I think it's one of them where, because obviously the 380 is a brand new loco, um, people are a bit more have taken a shine to that. Uh, but you've got to remember that the 158 is is the middle of mainline one is obviously attached to middle of mainline. You can't drive the 158 anywhere else unless you have that route. So realistically, this is the cheaper 158, and I, I, I'm inclined to say it's the better one. Right, so we're now approaching Croy, so let's get some brakes in. Obviously, the brakes on the 158 are a little bit uh, less responsive than a 380 because it's a diesel, and we're also going 90 mile an hour. So obviously, the, the braking from about 40 an electric train is going to be pretty much instant. With a DMU going about 100 mile an hour, you need to slow down just a little bit beforehand. But the brakes are decent on this. Um, obviously, you've got a lot of AI on this uh, on this portion of the route with 385s. I think they're playable even. So you know, there's a lot of like. You can see a lot of other stuff on this route so it kind of it adds a bit of variation because if you do a 385 run then you'll see 385s and 158s uh, before you would have just seen 385s in the very occasional steam rail tour or whatever else so in that sort of point you know in that sort of perspective you'll see a lot more varied ai when you're driving on scott rail express uh, and obviously when when this does eventually come to uh, to five circle i think it'll it'll be incredible if i'm honest on five circle i'm hoping it doesn't take away any any of the layers there all right as we arrive into croy now let's slow down the step one brakes i think i should do it so i'll let you have a little listen to the door sounds as well i don't think there's any door chimes i don't know whether that's correct or not um let's let's have a little there we go let's get that sort of vantage point and full surface brakes because we can oh there you go there's an example of some of the ai gwr hsts there you go cool lovely stuff so you get some of them as well on the route which i know with their gwr and you're thinking well why are they in scotland it's because the gwr hsts would be the intercity sevens so i think they're a bit of a placeholder but i don't know i can't confirm that so let's unlock the doors can you hear any do door opening sounds i don't think you can that's someone's opened the guard door so i'll let you listen to this one there you go so i think there's, there's not any door sounds i don't know whether that would be correct or not uh, but there we go, so that's the 158 on the Edinburgh-Glasgow route. Um, I mean, I quite like the 158, it adds a lot, you know, a lot more gameplay, I think, across the three different routes. And I mean, I just prefer DMUs anyway, so a little bit biased, but anyway. So yeah, I'll jump into somewhere in Scotland, spawn them both back into free roam, and tell you, give you my last thoughts and opinions on both the Loco DLCs. So I've jumped onto Five Circle here at Edinburgh Waverley. I thought, you know what, we've been on every Scottish route so far, just not on Five Circle. As you can see, we've got the 385s and the 170s over here. So if we do like a little pan, there you go, 385, 170, 380 and 158. So we've got all the sort of still running ScotRail stock, obviously not got the 314 here, um, but they are they don't run on ScotRail anymore. Um, but let's compare the two, right? So 158 is nice, it's cool. Obviously it's a unit that we've already got in the game, but there's a lot of differences between the middle of main one and the scott rail one it looks good it sounds good and it adds gameplay to three different routes class 380 again it looks very nice it also sounds very good um dovetail owned product so i mean it's quite nice and obviously if we had any future dlc scottish dlc it might not layer into as many routes but it adds a ton to kafkart circle uh, adds a whole new timetable to kafkart circle and uh, you know might, might have been nice to see this on edinburgh glasgow maybe even fifers ai um but i don't think that's realistic so yeah that's uh, that's the 380 visually i think the 380 looks a bit better so a lot better weathering on the 380 uh, obviously just looks a bit more spectacular uh, the 158 just looks like a 158 to be honest uh, but you know there's a bit of weathering it's not completely clean which is good so you know a lot of good work has gone into both both locos so sort of my final thoughts is if you want more gameplay um, and obviously with the potential of more gameplay in the future i'd go with the 158 because obviously 
like I say, if we get any future Scottish routes, it would most likely layer into most of them because, um, well, diesels run everywhere. So if you want, you know, the potential of more gameplay in the future, I'd get the 158. Or, you know, if, you, if you're if you excited to see the five timetable, obviously I'd wait for that too. Obviously for the 380, if you love the Cathcart Circle route and you want to see a much more lively timetable on Cathcart Circle, I'd go for the 380. Obviously, if we did see another sort of like Glasgow based route then maybe the 380 would be also used so obviously both of these would be used but I think the likelihood is the 158 would be used most often but if you like your EMUs and you want to add some life to Kafka Circle I'd get the 380. These are obviously both priced the same at $12.99 uh, and I think they're both worth it in different sort of ways. Um, obviously a lot of time and effort has gone into both of these and the developers need to eat so but yeah, what do you think? Let me know. Have you got both of these? Have you got one or the other? Let me know what you prefer, the Scott Rail Class 158 or the Scott Rail Class 3, 380. So yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please smash that like button and subscribe. If you're new, I'd massively appreciate it. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll hopefully see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.